Joel, in the beginning of your talk, you mentioned that prion disease is unique and that there's three causes. There's the acquired forms, whether it be through mad cow disease or medical procedures, which are rare, about 1%, followed by genetic forms due to a genetic mutation, that's about 10%. <clears throat> but the vast majority of prion diseases are what we call sporadic. About 85% of them just happen. And <clears throat> excuse me, last year, Dr. Gambetti and I talked a little bit about what might be at the basis of sporadic disease. What are your thoughts about what causes sporadic prion disease? And so um, I'll give you um, two potential hypotheses, and these are, are, are my own. Um, first is that... Um, we know that prion disease occurs much more um, frequently in people as they get older. And though this suggests that there's some sort of age-related um, uh, process uh, that's uh, related to the disease. And so what potentially might happen is that, say, in all of our cells, um, in even normal people, that every time, every day, right now, you probably have some small, tiny amount of PRPSC being formed. But the cell recognizes that this is wrong and it's bad and it gets rid of it before it causes problems. As you get older, um, it's likely that some of those quality control systems in your, in your brain don't work as well. And therefore it might be more likely that enough sort of rare events might happen in the same time in the same space to form uh, sort of a critical seed of prions that are then able to sort of take off and propagate uh, through the brain. Now, as to what exactly causes these sort of initial rare misfolding events, that's still anybody's guess. One theory could be that um, there could be sort of rare genetic changes in, in single cells in the brain that um, enhance the production of prions, and maybe uh, these might be the first cells to die in prion disease. And so by the time prion disease had, has completed, they wouldn't exist anymore. And therefore, these changes might be impossible to find or very, very challenging. And so I think the sort of the earliest events that are happening in sporadic prion disease remain one of those great mysteries. And um, I'm hopeful that through the generation of better cellular and animal models that we'll be able to get at these questions a lot better than we have been able to in the past. And hopefully we can identify why do prions form spontaneously and potentially what other sorts of um, um, you know, exposures or factors might influence the generation of prions in the brain.